in Africa, these giant African land snails are increasingly seen as a potential source of food as well as income for farmers. Snails contain protein, iron, calcium and vitamin A, as well as being low in fat. Most of our farmers are mainly looking for alternative to either addressing the high uh, rates of fertilizer cost, higher rates of inputs that are reducing their cost of production, and therefore use of snails, which is less capital intensive, with high valued products that generate more money, seems to be an attractive point for most of these farmers. Food experts believe that snail farming is a sustainable alternative to rearing other animals, such as cattle, which produce methane that contributes to climate change. Uh, the cost of this investment is roughly $1,500. Uh, the size that I am using currently is 60, uh, 60 feet by 30 feet. Considering like if it was cattle, it would be roughly four cattles. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's economical. Kenya has both land and sea snails. In certain coastal areas, sea mollusks also provide a rich source of protein during the drought season. Many use these to replace vegetables. We really love this food as it is very useful during drought whenever we cannot find vegetables. We do not struggle to find an alternative to vegetables as we use this meal to feed our children as days pass by. Farmers are increasingly exporting the snails to international markets such as Dubai where there is demand for snail meat. Civil society organizations in the Gambia have urged the authorities to prosecute former dictator Yahya Jame ahead of a long-awaited government statement on the issue. The government has until the 25th of May to decide on the recommendations produced six months ago by a commission that investigated the former dictator. According to the commission, between 240 and 250 people died at the hands of the state or agents in the period between 1994 and 2017. The civil society organizations want Yaya Jame and 69 others named by the commission as alleged wrongdoers to be held accountable for their crimes. We have taken towards building this nation up to this point. President Adama Barrow, elected in 2016, ending 20 years of dictatorship, has so far not given any indication of his intentions. As a Muslim and a, and a patriot, The first round of legislative and local elections in Congo will be held on July 10th, according to a government decision announced Friday. The announcement was made by government spokesman Thierry Mungala on state TV. The Congolese Labour Party of President Denis Sassungesu is the governing party and has already invested its candidates. It has 92 deputies out of 151 in the outgoing assembly. The only opposition party with a parliamentary group in the lower house of parliament, the Pan-African Union for Social Democracy, intends to take part in the elections. Although plagued by internal dissension since the death of its leader, Guy Brice Parfait Kolela, in the aftermath of the 2021 presidential election, the Opposition Union of Humanist Democrats will also participate. On the other hand, the Alliance for the Republic and Democracy of Mathias Zon the former Minister of Finance and the Federation of the Congolese Opposition of Clement Mirasa are in favor of a boycott, believing that the exercise has been decided in advance.
In southern Angola, droughts are cyclical and are getting more and more severe. The government has invested in agricultural training in order to help local communities to maximize crop yields. The initiative is supported by the government, international NGOs and the European Union. Farmers already know it just takes coordination. Planning is key within the agricultural calendar of any village or community. They always have some doubts in the fight against pests and diseases, in the technique of land preparation. From choice of seeds to the type of produce and how it is grown using natural fertilizers, these are only some of the techniques that are taught in these schools. Peasants also learn what not to do. My way of farming has also changed. Before I used to do unnecessary burning. At the school, I learned how to do controlled burning. A total of 139 schools have already been implemented across three provinces in southern Angola, Willa, Kunen and Namib. The aim is to reach 300 schools. The trial of Senegalese midwives accused of neglecting a mother who died during labor resumed on Thursday. Six health workers were charged in April with failure to assist a person in danger. The case has prompted enormous outrage in the West African country, where health workers are often accused of extorting patients, misconduct and negligence. The victim, Astu Sokna, allegedly waited hours for medical attention before she passed at a regional hospital in northwestern Senegal. Sokna's family blamed her death on medical negligence. Since then, patient rights organizations have been overwhelmed by complaints, testimonies and petitions against health workers, especially those in the countryside. A lawyer representing the accused has said his clients feel victimized, while the Association of Midwives in Senegal has voiced strong support for the accused. The association says the health workers are being unfairly targeted. Senegal's health system is dogged by staffing, infrastructure, equipment and funding problems. The country's maternal mortality rate stands at about 150 deaths per 100,000 live births, according to government figures.